Good day, Crime Talk aficionados. This is Scott Rice from Crime Talk, and thanks for watching. We have a busy docket today, so let's get started. First, Michelle Traconis gets a new lawyer. Second, the prosecution has rested in the Harvey Weinstein trial. A bizarre case of a missing 11-year-old boy in Colorado. And the Orange County District Attorney dismisses a high-profile doctor drugging case. An Instagram model is charged with trespassing at the Super Bowl. And in celebrity news, let's talk R. Kelly and Kodak Black and our dumb criminal contestant of the day. Let's talk about it. Good day, Crime Talk aficionados. This is Scott Reich from Crime Talk, and thank you for tuning in. For those of you who are joining us, if you have not already subscribed, please do so. Hit that little bell so you receive notifications of when we put out new content, which is almost on a daily basis, and when we go live, which will probably be on a weekend. So, First on the docket, Michelle Traconis. For those of you who do not know, Michelle Traconis was the old girlfriend of Photos Dulos when he was married to his wife Jennifer, but not the new one that was helping him get out of jail and post the bond before he committed suicide. Well, Michelle Traconis is also charged with a conspiracy um, related to the death of Jennifer Dulos. Now, she had a lawyer originally um, because she was originally charged with the tampering uh, case, just like Photos Dulos was. She was also then indicted um, as it related to the uh, murder of Jennifer Dulos. With her previous attorney, she went in and gave three interviews to the police. Now, these were probably subject to what they refer to as a proffer agreement. And a proffer agreement is that you come in and you are queen for a day. You can tell them everything you did and they can't use it against you unless, of course, you testify to something differently in court. All right. Michelle Traconis was obviously trying to either talk her way out of this entire situation or become a cooperator against Photos Dulos. Well, now that Photos Dulos is gone, frankly, she has no benefit uh, to the prosecution and they will want her to go down because she has been charged with and they believe that she committed a conspiracy to commit the murder of Jennifer Dulos. Now, she has a new attorney, okay? Now, I don't know anything about this new attorney. His name is John Schoenhorn. Um, apparently, you know, obviously Traconis' defense team took a much lower key than Photos Dulos' attorneys did. And he may be trying to undo uh, what was said. Now, here's the problem. Whenever you go in and you proffer with a client, you better be damn sure that your client wants to take a plea bargain or that you're going to get something out of it because they are locked into that story, okay? And sometimes, and I may find this hard to believe, sometimes clients don't always tell their attorneys everything, all right? Uh, but when you go in and you proffer, if you give a false statement, they can you know, charge you for giving a false statement as well. So you have to be absolutely honest. And when you do that, you can't go back later and say, ooh, I don't want to um, take a plea bargain anymore. Everything's off the table because they have those statements. And if you, it's depending on how the proffer agreement is written, like they do in the feds these days, if you even suggest that you had nothing to do with it or even something the slightest contrary to what um, you said in the proffer, they can bring in all that information against you. So you're screwed. So um, proffer agreements are tough. I think Michelle Traconis is probably going to get screwed in this entire situation. Uh, we'll see how old Mr. Mwahini, the attorney who's still in custody and, you know, friend and former attorney of Photos Dulos, how he fares in this. But as far as we know, he has not been cooperating in any way whatsoever. I think she's going to get uh, left holding the bag, so to speak. Anyway, next on the docket, the prosecution has rested in the Harvey Weinstein case. Yes, this case has gone on for some time. Obviously, there were only a couple of victims, complaining witnesses, uh, in this particular case, and a lot of the witnesses had to do with what we refer to as bad character evidence or 404B evidence, evidence to establish a pattern, a motive, 
um, modus operandi as to how Mr. Weinstein allegedly engaged himself and that why they should believe the victims who are testifying here in this particular case. Now, we talked about it. The emails were huge. When you have complaining witnesses continuing to uh, have contact with the person that they say uh, assaulted them, that's good for the defense, bad for the prosecution. The prosecution had to bring in a forensic psychiatrist to try and explain away why um, the victims would act a particular way, i.e. continue to date uh, Mr. Weinstein, continue to try to seek favors from Mr. Weinstein as it relates to employment and things of that nature. We'll see if the defense calls any witnesses. Frankly, from what I've seen and heard, I'm not sure I would get up there and just simply argue that it was all consensual uh, relationships and tell the jury you may not like Mr. Weinstein. He is a pig, um, but everything that took place was uh, consensual. And the reason they have to bring in all these other bad acts of you know 404B evidence is because their case is so weak and it's evidenced by the cross-examination that took place on the complaining witnesses, usually for about three days at a time. So Mr. Weinstein should not testify. He should not call any witnesses, in my humble opinion, and just simply uh, sit down and shut up. The exception to that would be if they have a witness who will say that any one of these witnesses has fabricated uh, something about this story, some sort of uh, admission, uh, but that would have come up in cross-examination because they have to lay the foundation for that. They just don't get to bring in a witness and say, this witness told me this. Uh, they have to lay the proper evidentiary foundation to impeach the witness. Isn't it true that you told uh, your friend, uh, Mr. A, uh, this, and they would have to deny it. Then you can bring in that witness that's not hearsay at that point because it's there to impeach a prior inconsistent statement to impeach that particular witness. So that is not hearsay. Other, If they don't have that, and I don't think they do, just rest and say the prosecution hasn't met their burden. And I'm telling you, I have won more cases by simply resting and saying the government hasn't met their burden. But we'll see what Mr. Weinstein and his attorneys have in store for all of us. Next on the docket is a case here from Colorado, and it's a case involving a missing 11-year-old boy by the name of Gannon Stock. Now, Gannon was last seen on January 27th when a video camera shows that he leaves his house with his stepmother, gets into a truck, and that's the last time he is seen. He's reported missing after his stepmother says that he did not return home from visiting with friends. There has been no... Um, sighting whatsoever of the young Gannon Stock and his family, his mother, his biological mother, his father, and his sister put out a video basically pleading for his safe return on YouTube. Um, and the stepmother has not participated in that, but it appears as though everyone is cooperating. The crime scene investigators have been to the house. In fact, the elected DA has been to the house, but they have no reports and they have no information at this time as to where Gannon may be. So if anybody has seen this young man or has any information, obviously they should contact the police immediately. A lot of speculation has already started in this particular case, but as we saw in the Heidi Broussard case, it's better to hold your speculation and let's base it on facts. No one's been charged. No one has been listed as a person of interest, and we'll just have to wait and see how this case develops. But once again, if anyone has any information, please call the El Paso County Sheriff's Department or the Colorado Springs Police Department. Next on the docket is a, a somewhat unusual case out of Orange County, California. And I always kind of see what's going on in Orange County because, well, my daughter went to uh, college out there at Chapman University. So it always is intriguing to me um, kind of what goes on um, in Orange County. It's a different uh, world for sure. One that, that uh, is not usually based upon reality for the rest of the world like you and me. That's for sure. Anyway, an individual by the name of Dr. Grant Robichaux and his girlfriend, Sarissa Riley, 
were charged with various counts. In fact, there were many women that had made allegations of inappropriate contact with them, and they were, in fact, charged. Seven women were the alleged victims of the good doctor and Miss Riley. Some 15 other women had been made allegations against the doctor, Miss Riley. Now, this actually became an issue in the election for the district attorney, and the now elected district attorney has reviewed the case, what they ref- what they call as their de novo review, and what that's a fancy word that they use in in the court, which basically means on appeal, uh, de novo means that the court will look at it to basically see if uh, they've made the wrong decision, that they'll look at it as kind of as a trier of fact. Well, the district attorney in this particular case, using this fancy word, reviewed it and said, I don't think I can prove this case beyond a reasonable doubt. He is supposed to meet personally with all of the complaining witnesses in this particular case because, well, he has that duty to explain to the victims why he doesn't believe he can prove this case. Now, remember, district attorneys have an ethical obligation to do justice. They should only take a case either file it and take it to trial if they believe ethically they can prove it beyond a reasonable doubt to a jury. And if they can't, it's their ethical obligation to dismiss. This case got a lot of publicity because Dr. Robichaud was a uh, quasi-Bravo TV reality star and appeared on the show on an online dating rituals of an American male. After going through this experience, the good doctor may want to uh, limit his uh, sexual escapades to uh, just one person at a time. And he may want to get a consent form to make sure everything is cool and consensual um, because obviously his reputation has been uh, tarnished, uh, I'm sure both obviously personally and professionally, and it will always be hanging over him. But why would you put yourself in that particular situation there, good doctor? Now, On to some real entertainment news. Next, let's talk about the case of Kelly Green. Kelly Green is a model. She has an Instagram following of some 250,000 followers, and she thought that she was going to make a big splash at the Super Bowl. Well, what Miss Green got was arrested. Now, she apparently thought that she was going to go streaking across the field uh, prior to the start of the Super Bowl, but unfortunately... She was detained before she was allowed to prance across the field in nothing but her birthday suit. Now, Miss Green, keeping a uh, good sense of humor about the whole thing, immediately took photos next to a swimming pool upon her release um, with the notations, young jailbait out of jail, she said, fresh out of the pen, fresh out of the Dade County. Miss Green is charged with trespassing, and could spend up to one year in jail, but let's face it, she's not going to get a, another day in jail uh, since she was arrested on this particular day of the Super Bowl. Good initiative, poor judgment. Miss um, Green obviously um, had big desires to get her name out there, but at least we, we, we got to see her name this way. But if you'd like to see more of Miss Green, um, we'll ask to uh, have Kyle put a little link to her Instagram page. And, you know, who knows? Maybe some of her uh, followers want to follow us as well. Anyway, we'll see. Next on the docket, let's talk some celebrity legal news. R. Kelly. Remember R. Kelly? Yeah, the singer. Been in lots of trouble. Had a documentary made about him. Doesn't leave him appearing uh, very well in uh, the light of many, many people. Well, guess what? His girlfriend... Azriel Clary is apparently considering working with the feds to get Mr. R. Kelly, but apparently she's a little concerned about statements that she may have already made to the federal agents, probably denying any wrongdoing whatsoever and saying she probably saw nothing whatsoever. But now, as she has had a little time to be separated from R. Kelly as he awaits his trial in both uh, New York and uh, Illinois, uh, she's been able to realize that perhaps she was being manipulated, oh, and probably looking at going to prison at some point um, if she was complicit You know, complicity, if you aid, encourage, abet, assist somebody in the commission of an offense, you're guilty just like you did it yourself. And guess what? 
So now she's looking to possibly cut a deal. Now, hopefully she has herself a good lawyer. Hopefully that lawyer is going to say, we're going to be able to give you everything you can and what you need uh, to get R. Kelly. But guess what? Miss Clary needs a free pass. She needs a free ride, a get out of jail free card. Well, she's going to have to go in and cleanse her soul in a proffer and admit that she wasn't truthful and hopefully she won't get charged. That's what she needs to do. We'll see if Miss Clary rolls on R. Kelly or if she continues to tow the company line. We'll just wait and see. Now, next we have on a little celebrity legal news is a gentleman by the name of Kodak Black. And I'll be honest with you, I've never heard of Mr. Black before, but apparently he's a rapper and apparently he likes to get in trouble and he even releases uh, songs while he's in custody. All right. So um, he's got a bit of a following and apparently he's donated some money and done some things, but he's also done some not very smart things like um, putting up on his Instagram uh, live uh, people having sex with underage uh, girls. Bad idea. Okay. Um, he also likes to carry guns. Um, he likes to brag about being so ghetto. So the young Mr. Black believes that he got screwed at sentencing because he received a 46-month sentence for basically being a prohibited person in possession of a firearm. That's basically a felon with a gun. You can't own a firearm if you are a convicted felon. Only if your rights are completely restored, and the only way that can be done is basically through a pardon by the governor or a uh, pardon by the president that that would restore your rights um, uh, under federal law. But the state law, you can't do it. And if it's illegal, you can't do it. So Mr. Black knew better, knows that. Now he's claiming that he was never convicted of a felony based upon his previous convictions, and therefore it's not applicable and he should reduce, have a sentence reduced uh, much lower than that. I don't think the young Mr. Black is going to have a whole lot of success on that particular uh, venture because his criminal history is is quite impressive uh, for a young man. In April of 26, Kodak Black was arrested in Florida and charged with possession of a weapon by a convicted felon, possession of marijuana, and fleeing from officers. In May of 2016, he was charged with armed robbery and false imprisonment, and he was detained in custody for that. Now, in 2016, he appeared and pled guilty or no contest to all charges under a plea agreement, was placed on house arrest, and had five years of probation, had to perform a lot of public service. Then he goes to Florence, South Carolina, and allegedly engages in uh, criminal uh, conduct there as well, and was not released from jail. In May of 2019, he was arrested once again for firearms charges, Uh, Before he could actually go on stage, he was arrested as as he was prepared to go on stage. He's been sued by that promoter for some $600,000. Mr. Black took a plea bargain and pled guilty in federal court, which oftentimes does, and he was sentenced to 46 months in prison, uh, much shorter than the 96 months that the uh, prosecution was asking for. Mr. Black has no way to appeal his decision, as in federal court, um, the United States Attorney's offices are requiring an appellate waiver, which means that you cannot uh, appeal your sentence. So I think Mr. Black needs to go back to uh, going back to prison uh, so he can get some more new material for his uh, records, but um, his opinion on the law and saying that he got screwed and that he should have got even less time um, is really not there. So Mr. Black, stick with what you do, write music, um, let the lawyers do the lawyer thing. Next on the docket, our dumb criminal contestants of the day, and we have two today. Now, look at this gentleman. He was really not that stupid, I guess, because he got a job at a convenience store, and he was working his first night in the night shift, and when the owner went to log on to a computer app to see if everything was under control and everything was okay, the owner quickly realized that the new employee was gone. Well, they immediately went to the store, called the police, 
found out that he had taken some $17,000 worth of money and goods with him. He was also smart enough to take his personnel file so that the owner has no idea where to find this individual or really actually what his name may be. But this individual is a contestant for the dumb criminal of the day because he also forgot to take the DVR recorder, which has his face. So we'll see if this individual is in fact caught and will be a dumb criminal contestant winner for sure. Our next dumb criminal contestant of the day is a woman by the name of Joan Faulkner. She's 41. The police were called for a domestic dispute. Obviously, like most of these, alcohol was involved. And the complaining witness in this particular case says that Ms. Faulkner basically put dog feces all over his face on numerous occasions. Now, Ms. Faulkner, when confronted by the police, said, yes, yes, I did rub dog feces, a.k.a. poop, on the complaining witness's face, take me to jail. Why would Ms. Faulkner be a dumb criminal contestant of the day? I mean, this kind of thing happens all the time. No, she gets it for admitting it to the police. Ladies and gentlemen, not that we want people to get away with it, but we want people to exercise their constitutional rights. And now she is admitted to this, and she was guilty. There was no evidence that apparently that the poop was rubbed on the man's face other than his word and once again, assuming all people were intoxicated, Miss Faulkner screwed herself. So she is a dumb criminal contestant of the week for not exercising her rights. I know there's a lot on the dock today. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. See all the links below to Facebook, Instagram, Patreon, to scottreich.com, where you can sign up for our free newsletter as well. And hey, it's free. You're getting stuff from free. We're not going to sell your email address. We're not going to bombard you with a bunch of stuff. You get a notice once a week. Go and join. ScottReich.com. Sign up for our free newsletter. Have a great day.